What is going on, everybody? And welcome to the Washington Brawl podcast presented to you by the Brawl Network. I am, of course, your host, Parker Hamlet. And today we are coming to you guys with a jam packed episode because joining us for the first time in Washington Brawl is special guest and senior vice president of media and content and the voice of the Washington football team, Julie Donaldson, who's going to come by and talk the Washington football team's huge upset win over the undefeated Pittsburgh Steelers. Also joining us is Ryan and Joey Silva, hosts of the Allies Behind Enemy Lines podcast, one of the best up-and-coming podcasts in the Washington football team world. But before we get into today's episode, guys, I got to tell you about our sponsor, Manscaped. When it comes to men's hygiene, Manscaped is as good and safe as Antonio Gibson in a PPR league. The Lawnmower 3.0 is the best hygiene tool for the modern man because of the ceramic blade and skin safe technology that avoids nicks and snags that will be completely taken out. You look right here, got that white little guard right there, completely protects you. This is the perfect protection you need for your franchise quarterback. The Lawnmower 3.0 is also waterproof and has a nice little LED light for those watching. It's a complete game changer they just released their shears 2.0 nail kit as well which is the perfect add-on to the lawn mower 3.0 trimmer no one likes an ungroomed set of feet fingers and most importantly balls that's why they have forever changed the grooming game with the perfect package 3.0 their the perfect package 3.0 comes with the new and improved lawnmower performance boxer briefs and travel bag for use when you are done quarantining and some other liquid formulations, including the crop preserver as seen right here, the anti-chafing ball deodorant for your sack and the crop reviver. This is a spray on toner for your sack made with a soothing aloe and hazel extracts that will give your testes a boost for a limited time. Subscribers get not one, but two free gifts the shed travel bag which has a 39 dollars value and the patented high performance anti-chafing manscape boxer briefs wearing them right now they're dynamic they're great they're comfortable they're silky they're smooth it's got everything you need get 20 percent off plus free shipping today using promo code brawl at manscape.com that is 20 percent off using promo code b-r-a-w brawl including free shipping One last time, that's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com using promo code BRAWL. Take advantage of this limited time offer, Washington Brawl listeners. Your balls will thank you. Now let's get on with today's episode. We just just love each other, and we're going to keep going. We we know that you know a lot of people try to talk down on us and stuff, but that's cool because we're just going to keep going. What is going on, everybody? It is a beautiful victory Tuesday. The sun is shining and the Steelers are undefeated no more. I am, of course, your host, Parker Hamlet. And this is, of course, the Washington Brawl podcast presented to you by the Brawl Network and Manscaped. Today, got a great action-packed episode for you guys, but we're kicking it off with a very special guest coming on to talk the monumental upset and everything Washington football. Because joining us today is senior senior VP of media and content and the voice of the Washington football team, Julie Donaldson. Julie, welcome to the show. How are you feeling about the win? It's It feels so good, doesn't it? Victory Tuesday, I can get used to that. Uh, it's amazing after a victory, just how you know the air smells sweeter, you appreciate and enjoy going to work. Uh, it makes everything much easier, I feel like, uh, in the district, in the area, because everybody loves a victory. But then, of course, to do it in the fashion that they did against a team that they hadn't won against in forever, a team that hadn't won this year, uh, it goes to show a testament of where Ron Rivera is taking this franchise and the players coming together and the potential of what could actually be with them. So uh, feeling pretty good today. 
Fantastic. I mean, it, you're right. It's not just a win. It, it was a, a big win in prime time. You know, that's against a lot of tropes that us watch football team fans are used to the watch football team not exactly succeeding in. So last night was a huge step in the right direction. Um, Julie is also host of Watch Football Today on NBC Sports Washington, where she was kind enough to invite me on last week, kind of talk about Washington Brawl and a couple other things about my fandom. So before we get started, Julie, I just want to say thank you. Uh, it was a dream come true. And I feel like it's also important to note that uh, the Watch Football team is also 2-0 and when we're collabing. <laughs> I won't dismiss that. Not at all. Why not? Let, let's take anything we can. I'm sure I'm, I'm down with that. Where would you got to wear? I'm not, I'm not a, not superstitious, but I'm, I'm a little stitious. Um, <laughs> but Julie, it's no secret that Ron Rivera's watch football team were underdogs nationally heading into this matchup. Every pregame fa- panel, whether it be Fox, whatever have you, black and gold across the board, um, people were looking at them to continue the undefeated streak. Um, Washington, of course, pulled out the monstrous upset. And all you can really see, though, throughout you know, social media is how Pittsburgh had a short week and COVID. And, and quite frankly, I'm just going to be honest, it just sounds like excuses to me. Do you, can you quite put a finger on why you feel like the Washington football team can never really get that recognition they deserve, no matter how bad, big the wins are? Well, look, I mean, the Steelers were – I mean, we wouldn't have had a Monday night game had it not been for what the Ravens, underneath their COVID protocols, pushing the Steelers game back. They had three, they had three games in 12 days. That is a lot for a team. Uh, and I know they took a lot of, to social media to say that they weren't happy with it. But here's the thing. The games need to be played. They have to be played. Uh, nobody's feeling sorry for anybody in the NFL you know, Washington did have more time to prepare for this, which did work to their advantage because there are quite a few guys that needed that extra rest to take care of the little dings and that they had in their bodies. Um, but you know what? Still, you saw that those Steelers, they came out, but they played hard. They did not look like they, uh, you know, were any worse for wear for having played against the Ravens um, just uh, what last Wednesday as well. So they came out, they played hard, but we managed to make some adjustments uh, you know, when Antonio Gibson goes down, we said, okay, somebody else has to step up. And it was really great to see an all around effort from this team. They didn't give up when they were down. Uh, you know, so I don't think you can use the short week as an excuse at all. Uh, we just came out and, and we played better and we did better than they did at the end of the day. Exactly. And, you know, Chase Young, he, he, he said after the game that uh, we ex- uh, Baltimore exposed some things. And, mm-hmm. and I feel like that's honestly the best sentiment to it. Just throughout the night, things were just not going watch football team's way. I think that's an easy thing to say. I mean, early early in the game, Alex Smith looked like a deer in the headlights. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, that pass rush was coming after him, TJ Watt. You know, we were down 14 nothing. Uh, that's something not a lot of people are going to talk about throughout this game. And, and, and you know, primetime matchup, that's another thing that Washington has had a hard time bearing hard time overcoming. So it, it was an absolutely huge win. And it's just really hard for me to look on everything. And, you know, especially with, with, you know, the new, re- new regime, people like yourself trying to breed positivity to see people just constantly discount what the watch football team does, because they, this game wasn't given to us. We took it. And mm-hmm. I think that's something that cannot get lost in the fray here. And I love seeing Ron Rivera talk today about uh, the PowerPoint presentation he gave out on humility to the team. Cause I feel like that is something that is very important to not get lost in all of this. Rivera also said that uh, exactly a year ago today was the first time he had a conversation with Dan Snyder after he was let go from Carolina. You know, Julie, I don't think it's a secret that about a month ago, things were about sh- a little shaky, a little bit murky for Rivera and the staff with three straight wins and a cultural reset. We're seemingly back on track. Um, where do you think this team is in regards to culture? How far do you think that they've come, especially after a win like this? Oh, you know, well, this goes a long ways to the team believing in themselves. And they knew that they had the opportunity. Every time I kept asking every player and coach, like, you know, what's the mindset? And really trying to get to the bottom of it. They all believe they had the opportunity to win. They're having fun playing. And I think that that's, that's translating on the field is they're understanding what it means to come together to be a team player. Um, the situational football that you kept hearing Ron Rivera talk about, where are you at? What is it making? This is not necessarily if it plays out in the right way or not, but were you understanding of where you were and how it played out and why? And they're really grasping that. And I think you're seeing the results of that. So, you know, as far as the culture, I mean, we're understanding what it takes to win. But I do believe that you've also seen Ron not put up with, you know, any nonsense. Uh, these players have a very clear understanding of what he expects and what he wants. And if you don't fall in line with that, then, you know, there is no tolerance for that. So I think we see that tone was set very early on. So I like where the culture is right now. You know, I like the way that this team is coming together right now, the way that they're sticking, because even during some of those losses and during some of the games where it was so close and, you know, the fans, we all were all jumping on it saying like, well, why did you make this decision? Why did you go for that? That was a terrible move. Um, the team didn't have any of that. 
there wasn't that inner bickering. You know, they came together, they stood by each other and they understood what they were working for. And that's really what it boils down to at the end of the day. Like, you know, fans are going to be fans. They're never going to be completely happy. Um, and as much as we love them and we want them when we need them and as much fun it is, it is to live and die with the team, um, that's not deterring the messaging that coach is putting to the players and the coaches are receiving from him and, and playing out. So I think we're seeing the results of that. Rivera's message has always been consistent. What the media sees, what the fans see, what maybe was happening on the field may not always translate that, but his message has always been, this is going to be a long-term thing. I'm going to have to come in and, and, and rip the walls down almost quite literally and, and, and build a new. And I feel like he's done that up to this point. And this was definitely a statement game. Um, the odds, like I said, were stacked against Washington and they were without Antonio Gibson for a majority of the game after that scary injury at the beginning, a little bit of a scare with Brandon Scherf as well. Um, I know you're not a team doctor, but uh, what is the latest you know on those two guys heading into this weekend's matchup against San Francisco? I would get updates, um, but the thing is, is we're just we're just going to wait and see. You know, um, they're going to be very cautious, of course, with anything. They're not going to rush anybody back, and I think it was a great testament to be able to see that. You know, if Gibson goes down, that there are other guys that can step up and be playmakers. Um, so it's not like you have to rush him back to where, you know, the only way that we're going to find success and to win is if he's on the field. Uh, we saw that we can do that without him and other guys can step up. Of course, we do want Gibson back, but you have to make sure that he's healthy before he is um, and that he can make the cuts and nothing's going to be lingering because it's not something that you want to be worse um, by for the sake of rushing him back. So I don't have an update further than they're going to be cautious with him and we'll, we'll wait and see. Hey, that's good enough for me. I mean, you know, when I was on Washington football today, you said, you know, why not the Washington football team? And now that 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 becomes more of a reality every single week we're going. And for the Washington football team to make a run into the playoffs, you're going to need Antonio Gibson every step of the way. So I hope that the team is very precautionary moving forward. And it was amazing to see them pull that out without him on the field. You know, someone who's been a very big part of that offense and being on the upswing throughout the last couple of weeks. But, you know, let's see, go on the positive side of things. Let's talk about some guys that did perform. Logan Thomas had an absolute career day um, on our first win against the Pittsburgh Steelers since 1991. Julie, what was the name that stuck out to you in the big win against the Steelers last night? Oh, I mean, look, I, I love what Logan's doing. You know, I love that he was transitioning over from quarterback to tight end. And you kept hearing Scott Turner saying, look, he's young at the position. He's still learning it. And when I would go out there and say that as well, say, hey, this is what they feel. You know, fans would slam me, say, oh, my God, he's been there for so long. Like, there's just no more. Like, we don't have any tolerance or patience for this. Um, but the staff saw what they could get um, out of him. And I don't know that they were anticipating as much as it is, but he's really growing in it. He's taking advantage of the opportunities. And you see him like not be afraid to do, you know, the blocks to recover that fumble recovery. That was huge. Oh, um, yeah. Going that extra mile to try and get that extra inch in order to get that, you know, to the 10 yards. Uh, you know, I really like the performance he's putting up. And Cam Sims is a player that I really am enjoying watching as well. You know, he's been up and down dealing with injuries. Practice squad makes the squad pushed down from the squad. And, you know, he was having his opportunity because of an injury to come in here and make some plays. And the biggest knock against him was making sure I, well, he wasn't as consistent and he's really going out there and working hard to try and say, you can trust me as a receiver. Um, he is that big body. And if you just knew how to like, make sure you use it to break those tackles, he can be effective. And we're starting to see that pay off. So given the opportunities to be able to step up and take advantage of it, I'm really liking the play of those two. Cam Sims with that incredible 30 yard reception mm -hmm. in crunch time. You know, you, you got to put some points on the board. You know, he's somebody who's been transitioning through camp, kind of had a hard time making it on an active roster. You know, he's really echoing the sentiment Ron Rivera and them are trying to get for the staff. You know, I, I saw they released uh, the t shirt today, no name but team. And I think that that sums it up perfectly. So let's look forward to the future bit a little bit as we close this out. Four games remaining on the schedule. You know, no matter the outcome, what can watch the football teams that fans expect? from the organization moving forward into 2021? You know, here's the thing. I'm not one on predictions. I'm not going to go sit through and tell you who's the win loss, the win loss, um, because that's just, first off, I'm terrible at it. Um, but what I do like and what I do believe you're going to get out of this team is you're going to get that fight. They're not going to be giving up. You, you've seen how resilient they are. Uh, you know, even when this team was down 14 nothing to the Steelers, that was the biggest thing we said is you can't get down to them. You can't. This is not a team you can play from behind with. Um, they managed to find a way to play from behind. You know, it's not ideal. It's not a recipe for success. But I think what this team has learned, and it starts with that very first game against the Philadelphia Eagles, where they were down, they had to fight their way back, is that you're never really out until the final, final whistle is blown. So you're going to get some tightly contested games. Um, you know, I believe that they're limiting the mistakes. We had a little too many penalties in the last game, you know, which I think I'm sure they're going to get, you know, talking to, but they were trying to adjust a little bit the way that they're playing to go 
and account for the way that Ben Roethlisberger and the receivers um, were out there and going to attack you. But you're going to get a team that's going to fight for it. You're going to get a team that's going to have fun playing. And uh, there, that means that you're going to have some fun games to watch. And that's what I'm excited for. So nice we'll be prepared should we get to the playoffs. We will be yeah, Exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, took, you took it right out of my head. I, I, one thing that I think was the best part about this win was just seeing the progress of this coaching staff and everybody in the building, including yourself. All that hard work's finally coming onto the field. You, you can finally see those results starting to translate. So, but Julie, thank you so much for stopping by, uh, taking time out of your very, very busy day to talk <laughs> on Washington Brawl. Um, like I told you on the show, and I've said about most of the new regime, you guys are doing an absolutely stellar job, you know, making us feel like our voices are heard. And yeah. as a hard watch football team fan, I couldn't ask for more. All right. Appreciate you. All right. Take it easy. Great stuff there from Julie Donaldson, the senior vice president of media and content for the Washington football team. Up next is the two co-hosts of the Allies Behind Enemy Lines podcast, Ryan and Joey Silva. But before we get into that, football is here, and so is your shot at millions, Washington Ball listeners. Thanks to our new partnership with DraftKings, all new players can play free for millions with their first deposit. Act quickly, Washington Ball listeners. This offer won't be around forever. Terms and conditions apply. Head over to DraftKings.com today and get started. Now, it's the boys over at the Allies Behind Enemy Lines podcast. I am joined by the two co-hosts, some guys I'm really excited to bring on, of the Allies Behind Enemy Lines podcast, Ryan and Joey Silva. What's up, guys? Thank you for joining the show. Thanks for having us, man. We're, we're excited to be on. Uh, good, you know, appreciate you reaching out to us. It's fun to, you know, always get together with a couple, uh, couple other football team fans and, and talk about the team we love so much. Yeah, thanks. We really appreciate you having us on, Parker. And as we said, it's, uh, we all, I always say hashtag, we all need allies, especially when we have a team like the Washington football team, who everyone loves to hate on, who everyone loves to make fun of. So we got to get together and connect. So we really appreciate you reaching out. <laughs> Absolutely, man. We all need allies. That, that's that's got to be on a t-shirt, man. I, I like the sound <laughs> of that. Um, so Ryan, Joey, for those who have not listened to Allies Behind Enemy Lines, you know, what is the relation to you two guys? Brothers, you know, tell people who haven't listened before. Uh, yeah, so we're actually uh, uncle and nephew. Um, I'm Joey's uncle. He's my nephew. Uh, no, not really. He, he's, he's, <laughs> he's, he's, he's actually my, my mom's little brother. Um, and uh, but yeah, so we, you know, I, I grew up a, a Washington fan, uh, mostly because of him. And uh, his mom, my grandma, we, uh, we travel around uh, the country when we're allowed to and go to different games, go watch, uh, you know, what used to be the Redskins, now the football team, play at different venues. We've been to D.C. numerous times uh, every year here in Dallas. I live here in Dallas. Joey's down in Austin. So that's where the, the allies behind enemy lines comes from, you know, obviously here, right, in, right thick in, of Cowboys territory. So every <laughs> every year, uh, whenever Washington's here, we go, you know, and and little by little, the, the group of which we go with has gotten bigger and bigger as our families have gotten bigger. So it's been it's been a good time. So I, I got to ask this, Joey, how was Thanksgiving? You guys both being in Texas, just an ass whooping on Thanksgiving day of the Dallas Cowboys. I mean, t tell me, tell me what it was like sitting around the table, talking, talking football there. <laughs> well, it was, it was, you know, it wasn't a lot of sitting at that point, you know, we're watching the game, a lot of standing and pacing around and we're almost, you know, Washington football team fans, you know, our cardiac kids can get us at the end of a, at the end of our seat. So uh, we had high fives going on. It was screaming and break dancing and, you know, every, you know, the, the little kids are running around. I don't even know what they're screaming about, but they're screaming because we're screaming. But it was the best Thanksgiving in a long time. You know, I mean, we just played them a few years ago on Thanksgiving, and me and Ryan were there, you know, in person. And that place was a rocking when we got beat there. And so uh, <laughs> it was a much better feeling to be able to go into work, you know, and, and get our presence here in Texas with our with our Washington gear on and know that we we hold the crown this year. Jerry World's gorgeous, man. The only time I've seen Dallas and Washington play, uh, it's actually my first home game back in 2016 when Alfred Morris hit the old swing on us and beat us. Right at the end of regulation. Yeah. So Ooh. you guys are, you know, in enemy territory, still watching mm -hmm. Washington get some doves. That, that's awesome. It's nice to see. I love talking to Washington fans who live in Texas. They always have great stories about that. Um, <laughs> like I said, I'm a big fan of the podcast. Um, we echoed a lot of the same sentiments on both of our shows coming into this week's matchup. 
But overall, and Ryan, I'll start with you. How are you feeling after the win? You know, it was, it was almost like a dream. You know, when, when Boston got the pick, I just almost couldn't even believe what I was seeing. 1000%. I was ready for there to be, uh, you know, a flag for illegal hands to the face or something like I, I, I was I was like, okay, until we get the ball and snap the ball on offense, I'm not believing it. But uh, man, I am juiced. I, I could not be more excited. You know, morale is at an all time high right now. Um, it's, it's like you said, it, it was a dream going into the game. I had a good feeling. I was like, all right, you know, if we play our brand of ball. We control the ball. Uh, defense doesn't give up too many big plays to those, you know, their three big wide receivers. I think we might be able to, uh, to, you know, to, to sneak away with the victory. Then halfway through the game, you know, it looked like things were not going to go our way. And I was like, yep, I've seen this movie about a thousand times. I know where this is going. Uh, but you know, little by little, we start chipping away. And I told Joey this earlier when we were recording, um, Alex Smith, like with him at the helm, I feel 100% comfortable in any team. comeback. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I feel 100% comfortable in any comeback. Back, you know, a couple seasons ago when Kirk Cousins back there, you're always waiting for that back breaking interception every single time. It's like, all right, now, no matter if it's going to happen, when's it going to happen? And with this, with this team, with this offense, with Alex Smith, uh, you know, controlling the ball back there and, and running the offense, um, I, I feel super comfortable with with him back there and you know that i don't let that doubt creep into my mind too much i'm still realistic about this team and this organization from time to time but uh yeah i i cannot be more juiced man so with the kirk cousins slander i, I knew there's a reason i liked you guys i feel the same oh. exact way <laughs> i i was a huge 2018 guy you know i was at the game where alex broke his leg but going into that Oof. game i felt so good about the team i was like just play good defense and let alex take care of the ball it's a winning recipe and yeah. and no one's gonna take the smile off my face that's exactly how i'm feeling right now too <laughs> You know, what about you, Joey? Same, same exact thing there. I mean, you know, I, as we said, we always want our team to win. And we thought that we had a good enough team to win this game. But you just never know what's going to happen. We know our team has let us down in the past in similar situations. And we don't win these type of games. So going in, I had, you know, I had my high hopes, but I also had my realistic expectation. But when they went out there and, play, and played like a team, again, the key word team, a team victory. You know, we had your, you know, we talked about it on, you know, earlier. You have your biggest uh, weapons, Antonio Gibson, go down in the beginning of the game. You have, uh, you know, Ch uh, Terry McLaurin, the captain, not going to say the old name anymore, the captain, <laughs> Terry McLaurin, um, go out there and, you know, not, not put out a game like that. And the rest of the team rallies and plays an awesome, you know, game on both sides of the ball. How can you not be excited about the youth and the, and, and the, the direction that our team's going right now? It's like, as, as you said there, when he's talking about Alex Smith, that's a different team with that type of leadership at the helm. And that's why I've always been a huge Alex Smith fan. It's not always what you can do is what you bring out from others around you you know and, and you know he you know personally we have a lot of great athletes in the league that are great you know individual players but someone like alex smith who can go out there and bring the best out of every position on that floor i mean we're, we're talking about alex smith hitting jd mckissick and logan thomas you know having great games if we would have told you that in the off season you guys we would have been laughing these are fringe stadium. players <laughs> exactly yeah. exactly these are not it's, pro it's, bowlers. it's just amazing <laughs> it's just a whole it's a great feeling right now yeah, and, and to me, comparing to the 2018 is not an insult. And to me, the 2018 team in full capacity, you had Jordan Reed, Alex Smith, DJ Smith, that defense popping off. Now you look across the board, you've got more first-round draft picks on that defensive line. You have the uh, number one, number two passing defense in the NFL. You're in better terms than you were. And now the NFC East is limping as bad as it did in 2015 the last time we won the division. So the, the recipe for the Washington football team to take this, the, the whole stretch is there. It is evident. Um, I don't know who runs you guys' socials, but I did see one of you guys tweeting on the page um, that this was the team's biggest win since 2012. Um, I, I have to agree with that. I, I you know, I, th my brain do does kind of go back to 2015, but yeah. Ryan, were you getting some 2012 vibes last night? Were you feeling oh, it? Oh, one thousand percent yeah joey and i were actually in dc uh week 17 when we beat the cowboys to win the division oh. in 2012 hey, you want to talk about ele electricity uh joey's hugging dudes next to us that look like <laughs> slim shady and he has no idea who this guy is he just turns him and just grabs him and hugs him so we got big time vibes from that um but we, we actually said that last week on our show that this is kind of putting together and we're peaking at the right time of kind of the same thing and the same electricity that we felt when rg3 burst on the scene you know we're, we're two and seven or whatever two and six whatever the record was and we rattle off uh you know we went out went out the rest of the season to, to make the playoffs it's kind of the same vibes here and uh going back to kind of what we're saying about alex smith you know he's not 
providing the same electricity in which uh, RG3 did it. He's doing it in different ways, but also in a way that's encompassed the entire team. You know, we, we see that catch that Logan Thomas makes down the sidelines. Chase Young books it 40 yards down the sideline. Ryan Kerrigan's out there getting juiced up. You know, Peyton Barber, he that guy hasn't seen a lot of snaps, uh, you know, until as recently. He's getting, ju- uh, you know, juiced up. He's pumped up. There's so many guys that are that everyone seems like is bought in. Dwayne Haskins last week picks up Alex Smith after he takes a big hit on the sidelines. First thing he says to, you know, yesterday after the game is Alex Smith is the man, you know, the comeback player. Like everybody's bought in and everyone is is fighting for this team. And that was not since recent, maybe since last, you know, 2012 is the last recent memory of when everyone is all in. Everyone has the same goal in mind and they're all trying to get to that finish line, whether it's dragging each other, pushing each other, whatever it is, they're all trying to cross that finish line at the same time. And I, I love it. I haven't felt this way, like I said, probably since 2012. I love it, man. That's exactly how I felt. You know, like someone Boston got the interception, I'm leaping and banning throughout my house. But a name that you just mentioned, a name I got to bring up because it's been a talking point in Washington football team Twitter today is Dwayne Haskins. You know, yeah. you had a lot of those people that, are, are being deemed as naysayers for finally congratulating the team and rewarding the team on success. Cause I mean, let's be honest here, guys, about a month ago, there was not a lot of consistency. The, the coaches were saying this, the team was doing that. The team was doing that. The coaches were saying this, it, it was, it was a shit storm. There's no other way to say it. Yeah. Um, but I, I just have to ask, and uh, you know, Joey, I'll start with you. Do you, do you see this team, do you see them going the distance? Do you see them winning division title? Do you see them making a run like 2012? I, I, I right now, if you ask me this right now, especially with the feeling after coming off of yesterday's uh, win, how could you not? How can you not think this team can go out there and, and prove that they, de- they not only deserve a division title, but deserve a, a play playoff spot? You know, everyone's making fun of us, you know, the, the laughing stock of the league about, oh, NFC East doesn't deserve to send anybody to the playoffs. But we all we might have two play- teams in the playoffs if things play out the way that they are right now. I mean, we got games coming up against Seattle. We got games coming up against San Francisco, Carolina, teams that are right there on the kill of, of making the playoffs. And so these are playoff games. You know, these are playoff teams. So we go in there and, and do what we did against Pittsburgh. We are one of those teams and we definitely deserve to go on a run and a, a similar run that we did in 2012. Now, will it end like it did in 2012 with a, with a, with a, with a, with a, with a heartbreaking loss to a, to a Seattle team? I, I think not. I think we can do a little bit better than that. But I think this has the juice, you know, of, of, of a team that has a lot of momentum. It has a lot of eyes on them right now. has a lot of great things happening in their, in the, in the, in their favor. And it's all about getting right at the right time of the year. You know, it's not, not what happened before, you know, the last you know, 12 weeks. It's what happens from here on out. And I think this team is set up for success. And they can I, definitely I'm, make this run. I'm really hoping it doesn't end like 2012. <laughs> if you got to look at Alex's leg before halftime, he's gushing. I was like, oh, my God, what is happening? <laughs> not again. <laughs> what, what exactly happened there? I never got the whole story on that. He got a cleat. He got a spike in the shin. And That's so he started right. gushing was, uh, blood, yeah. Chase Rie, right? Yeah. Yeah. It looked like he stepped on him. See, when I saw it too, I, I, my first thought was, you know, which leg is it? Did something burst mm-hmm. inside? And then once I realized that it was his left leg, I was like, okay, we're, we're good. It must've just been, you know, a football injury of, of some sort, but yeah, that thing looked gross. I had some emotional attach. I've always had emotional attachment mm-hmm. to Alex Smith. I've followed him his entire career. Loved him in San Francisco, loved him, you know, in Kansas city. I, I, I've always respected him as a quarterback and, you know, some, some people are gonna say, "Oh, well, you're getting up on your soapbox because of because of his injury and his comeback." I'm like, I, I just, I just dis. Well, I, I'm not gonna lie to you guys. Watching that that thirty for uh, E60 uh, Project mm-hmm. Eleven, if that doesn't make you feel emotionally attached to this team's success, I, I don't know what else can. Um, mm-hmm. But it- yeah, no, one thousand percent. I mean, even fans that aren't watching football fans, they're they're you know they felt the same way. I feel mm-hmm. like. Yeah. And, yeah, and you know, if you're like not I said, Alex Smith, you're a scumbag right now. <laughs> Sorry to interrupt. <laughs> <laughs> He's a great person with a great, a great goal. There's those Rivera stands that are like, Ron always had things under control. Blah 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 blah. blah. I, I just, I don't buy into that. I think things are finally turning around. Things are finally starting to get consistent. And when's the last time we could talk about a, a, a three-game win streak? 2012, maybe. I, just, I, I, I couldn't tell you, man. But it was, it was a very improbable win last night. Um, to, especially due to the circumstances. You know, you lose Antonio Gibson earlier, who is by far the best rookie running back, not even close. You're down 14 oh, you know, on the road at Heinz Field. Ryan, what was the biggest thing that impressed you about the win? 
how we just kept trucking along, you know, it, it just, you know, we got the field goal. Uh, you and I were talking, you know, before we jumped on here, the, the, the crafty veteran move of Alex Smith running off with the ball to give him a, just a little extra time to get that field goal. Um, you know, it, it was only three points, but still, I think it was, you know, enough to, to kind of, you know, go into halftime feeling like, all right, we got something on the board. We didn't get blanked. And then, like I said, just slowly, but surely just chipping away, chipping away, chipping away. That defense held up strong. Obviously the big goal line stand was huge with, with uh, Chase Young taking down uh, uh, Benny Snell, I believe it was yeah and so like like i said we just stayed the course you know we didn't we didn't get erratic uh i think in pass under john gruden with kirk cousins then we we start you know trying to go outside of our offense we try to start going for the big play uh to try to get that back real quick it's like when you're gambling and you know you lose you lose money so guess what now you double it to try to win back that money you just won and then and then you lose again you end up you're down three times the money you originally were um but we just stayed the course we just kept on trucking kept on playing and kept you know moving the ball the way we know how you know whether it's dinks and dunks whether it's these quick slant passes what we know whatever it may be and then you know we talked about antonio gibson going out we still have you know he, he's he's great because he's a nice combo running back he can run and he can catch the ball well guess what peyton barber he's that short yardage guy he can he can run the ball no problem jd mckissick what's he do he catches the ball out of the backfield really well so although we don't have that one singular guy that can do both we have two guys that can still do it pretty well and so we didn't lose a ton in losing him but we just lost you know maybe the keeping the defense on their heels a little bit but i think once Pittsburgh kind of got their backs against the wall and we, we, we bring it within one score game. Then they're kind of looking like, Oh shit, what just happened? We just let this team back in this game. And, uh, and I think that was the biggest thing. And, and the, you got to credit that to, to Ron Rivera and to Alex Smith staying calm, cool under pressure. Whereas, like I said, in the past, that would not have been the case. Yeah. You know, that defense get that huge yeah. top inside the one too, you know, we ended up winning by six points. You take that score off the board. I mean, that's, that's, pretty much the difference in the game right there. I think one of the biggest things on the offensive side of the ball that, that really grabbed me early and made me go, oh, God, this is going to be a long night, was just how much Pittsburgh's defense took Terry McLaurin out of the game. Yeah. He only finished with two receptions for 14 yards. Normally, Terry is our only catalyst on offense. So you take out Antonio Gibson, and you know then you've just got Terry McLaurin, you're taking him out of the equation, and I was just like, oh, man, this is, this is going to be a long game because you kind of had to worry about that one-two head monster that started in Cincinnati. But, you know, Terry got almost completely taken out of the game, but at the same time, he still has that effect of, of garnering all that attention mm -hmm. from the secondary. Speaking of garnering a lot of attention, Chase Young had some straight up bullets and board material coming after that game, <laughs> stating that Baltimore had exposed some things yeah. a couple days prior in their matchup. And they also said, Chase was also quoted in saying that they were the better defense. Joey, is this Washington <laughs> football team the best defense in the NFL? You know, is, is it time to finally eat the casserole? Wow. <laughs> is it time to eat the casserole? I love that you brought that back all the way around. Yes. Um, I'm going to sit here and say one thing I said earlier. We are the best red zone defense bar down. You know, bar none, bar none, bar none. You know, hands down, bar none. We are the best red zone defense in the NFL. I think our secondary leads a little bit to be determined to go to, to push us all the way to say, to say we're the best. We're definitely top. I think we show we're top five, maybe top three defenses in the NFL last night. And but red zone all the way. We are the best defense in the end. But the way that line comes, you take apart, you know, take with secondary out of the equation, the last you know 10 yards there, and you put that that front seven on there, and you, you tell them that we're gonna draw a line right here. Like I like I've told Ryan before, it's the mall gates. They drop that mall gates on that on that on that goal line. You ain't getting past there. You ain't going in that store. You know, you're you're staying out. You're gonna have to wait till tomorrow. And so uh, that's what happened with that with that defense. So uh, uh, hats off to Chase Young. You know, and he and I like him being vocal like that. You know, he shows passion, shows dedication. And, and some people can say he's talking cocky. No, he was straight spitting facts. You know, they came out there. They like, Baltimore did expose some things. And yes, they were the best defense on the team you know, on the field yesterday. I, I mean, the casserole man, and I'm getting seconds. You know, I. I <laughs> I see it. I, I I just see it now. You know, this pass rush, this secondary, which is vastly underrated. And if anybody's not buying in on the Chase Young hype at this point, please, NFL Films has a great excerpt of him and Mike Tomlin talking before the game. I don't know if you guys caught this or not, but Mike Tomlin looked dead at Chase Young for the game and said, you know, I gotta. I, I hope I never lose as many games as I need to lose to get a guy like you. I, I mean, the guy is <laughs> he's an emotional leader. He is bit, everything yeah. on this defense. He brings everything, not just on the field. And, you know, I've got a lot of people, uh, you know, me, me living in Virginia. I'm around a lot of Carolina Panthers fans because North, North Carolina's right there. So, like, oh, well, Jeremy Chen, defensive rookie of the year. You watch the tape, top to bottom. Chase Young is the most valuable player on the field almost all the time. I mean, his, water, his, his motor never ends. He's blowing up screens. He Wherever the ball is, he's not far away. 
at all. And that's a, de- that's a defensive lineman, man. We're not talking about Jeremy Chin, who just snagged a couple turnovers against Kirk Cousins and the mediocre Vikings. We're talking about a guy who is an absolute menace. And, and, and Ron said today in that press conference, he said, not only does he bring him to the field, man, he's become a student of the game. He is also an emotional leader for this team. And he's almost become like a spokesperson for us and the fans of the media after yeah. they get these big ones, too. I mean, he just he feels like the catalyst for everything that is trending upward in Washington. And I did hear you mention the secondary, Joey. And I, I do want to bring up that – Cameron Curl, DeShazer Everett, man, what a tandem. You know, it's proven to be a really dynamic pairing. And I hate to look ahead. I hate to be negative. This is a victory podcast. I'm really not seeing a situation where Lana Collins fits in the secondary anymore. Do you guys agree with that? 1,000%. 1,000%. We, yeah, we've mentioned it a couple times where it's going to be hard for him to come back uh, and, and fill, you know, come back to his regular role that he was, you know, that he had before he went out. Uh, because the two guys that, I mean, Cameron Curl has been absolutely unreal. I mean, an absolute steal. Uh, I mean, the guy, the guy can cover pretty well, but guess what? He'll lay the wood on you too. He does not, he does not mind dropping that shoulder right into your solar plex and making you feel it. Uh, DeShazer Everett's definitely come a long way this season. I feel like this is his biggest improvement that we've seen from him so far. And so it's been huge, but yeah, Lanning Collins, he, I think he brings the name recognition but i think that's about it i don't know if he's I, you know if, if he's fine being a role player cool but i don't think he's got i don't think he he i don't think we can justify making or our a linebacker team. or a linebacker yeah. be, you know he's uh, put him up at linebacker you know um i think you would let the name off that list there mr i always want to call him christopher superman reeves but jeremy reeves i think someone that's came in and played a great game against the cowboys you know and, and popped in last night for a spell as well but, you know, they do have some pieces there. And I think, you know, me and Ryan, we talked about it before the trade deadline. If, you know, that injury doesn't happen to Landon Collins, he might be shipped off to somebody somewhere else right now anyway. You know, I think that injury saved him from being traded. So yeah. I think it is a crowded secondary right now with a lot of youth. I think that Ron Rivera saw that when he did not want to bring Eric Reed in or, or, or after actually uh, um, offered him that practice squad position because he already saw what he had there. And, you know, a lot of us doubted him on that. But, you know, hats off to him for noticing that. But as we move forward, that you know that 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 secondary looks like it's got some good youth, and you know we got some steals there from Calvin Curl in the seventh round. I don't think this defense plays this well with Landon Collins in oh, the lineup, for, and, and that, sure not. I'm sure not trying not. to take away from Landon Collins. I mean, he is he is an All Pro, but just. Like you said, these these young guys are coming down to the box. They're laying people out. They're playing great in coverage. I was listening to Watch Football Talk. Uh, Br- Brian Mitchell said it best. He said that DeShazer Everett imposes his will on people. He's a little guy, but he will light you up if, if you come across the middle of the field. And, and that's what we were missing. Guys yeah. weren't making you scared to go to the middle of the field. And now we have that with two young guys. And I, to me, that's just – that's priceless. And, and, and speaking of prices, I think Collins' tag is just too high, like you oh, guys said. for sure. It, 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 if he plays next year on that salary, I just don't see where he fits in this defense unless he's in like a sub-linebacker, Deion Buchanan slash Isaiah Simmons kind of package. That's yeah. the only value I see in him. It really is, and I hate to say that. And I, I'm, I'm going to kind of come off the pessimism here for a second, um, go back to the positivity a little bit. Ocean <laughs> has also been, you know, extremely exceptional despite a few hiccups. Um in the first half, I was very keen that if Washington wins a time of possession, they win this game. I said that all week. It may have only been a minute, but I don't know if you guys, I really felt like Washington controlled the ball. And I feel like that was really Alex Smith's biggest strength. And I, I think that was honestly one of the biggest keys to this game. The penalties were really a killer as well, nine for 62. <laughs> and we already kind of got into the uh, administrative issues with the football <laughs> with Alex Smith. So what did you guys make of that whole ordeal? Let's get into that a little bit more. Like I said, I thought it was a crafty move. I thought it was, I didn't even know that that was like possible. You know, I, I, I didn't know what the, what, I don't know what the rule was around there, uh, around that. So the fact that he either knew it or it was an accident or just even be in that frame of mind of like, all right, I'm just going to do this and see what happens. I mean, I love it. Like I said, very crafty move uh, from a crafty veteran, a guy that, that needs to scrap and get everything he can. Uh, it was perfect. I loved it. And Steelers fans were freaking out. You know, oh, they shouldn't be allowed to kick this field goal. Blah, blah, blah. I, and Alex was so like cerebral with it. I didn't know whether it was an accident or not. Just by That's the expression what I'm saying. On his face. Yeah, exactly. It was, like, it was just like, I'm just running off. Yeah, these guys are coming back on the field. I'm, I'm, t- I'm taking off. And then everyone's looking around like, wait, what just happened here? <laughs> <laughs> what about you, that was um, a crafty you know again alex smith uh, that, that veteran leadership that knowing what's going on everybody else questioning what he's doing oh he's taking he's taking a sack he's taking the, the clock down but as as we all saw we got the time to get the field goal on there we we we, we did not want it was so all those you know dustin hopkins a name that we have not brought up here uh, is such an mvp i mean that field goal before halftime the Rejected. two fellows at the end of the game so much we've all had so much hate for him for all these fellows he's missed over these last you know we've all been calling for his head all of us have i know i have i know ryan has 
but I was saying it yesterday, those last two kicks. So like, he, he earned all my respect that he made the kicks we needed to make in the most important game, as I said, in almost a decade for our team. So it's, you know, all the way around. You can't, you know, game balls all the way around. I know Cam Sims got one, but that whole, you know, Alex Smith, Dustin Hopkins, all these guys deserve for what was just a, you know, we weren't the dumbest team on the field. We talk about that all the time. We just can't – just don't go out there and be the dumbest team on the field. And yesterday we were not. It's been a rough 2020 for Dustin Hopkins, and I, I was tweeting, you know, this is redemption for him. It, the game didn't really feel like it was over for me for me until he kicked that second field goal. So, mm-hmm. shout out to Dustin Hopkins. Game ball for Dustin Hopkins. But let's go and just give out some game balls while we're at it. You know, it's a gr- great thing to bring up. I'm going to go and give mine to a guy that I don't think he get enough credit for how good he's played this season, especially after the way he started last – or ended last year. Montez Sweat. Oh, just what a menace. I don't know how to use that word for Chase Young, but these two on the edge. Montez's athleticism is absolutely almost unmatched. I, I mean, you know, you had that play inside the five, big part of that goal line stop. He blows up a motion, pulls up, get, gets a deflection. He had P, three pass deflections on the day. I think he had one with the interception with Bostic as well. So Montez being just absolutely relentless as a pass rusher, constantly getting after the quarterback, constantly being everywhere that you need him to be. He is really coming to his own. And, and, and this tandem, man, you can almost understand why guys like Ryan Kerrigan are getting some limited snaps. But, you know, Ryan, let's go to you. Who gets your game ball? I'm going with Logan Thomas. I mean, he huge Good game, choice. nine catches on nine targets, 98 uh, receiving yards, a touchdown. I mean, he's kind of he was kind of the one that was getting the ball moving a little bit with uh, Terry McLaurin, not able to get as many uh catches or th- passes even thrown his way uh, early in the game. So my, I definitely I, – I think I know where Joe is going to go, so I, I won't say that guy, but I, I'm going Logan Thomas for sure. I mean, obviously, scoring touchdown, having a big game like that. And he's been coming along the last, you know, two or three weeks as well. We had high hopes for him uh, coming out of training camp, and he was, you know, kind of, you know, kind of our – Right. You know, he, he was he was around that middle area, that middle ground. But yesterday, uh, Joy and I said earlier, he kind of looked like prime, like Jimmy Graham, prime Jordan Reed. Like he looked like a difference maker tight end for a guy that played quarterback in college. Uh, it's, it's been fantastic. So if we can sure that up and if he can be our our tight end going forward and play like this, something we can expect from him going forward. Uh, I, I'm, I'm all in. So I'm definitely giving mine to Logan Thomas. I, I think Logan Thomas deserves it. You know, I, I was talking to Julie Donaldson earlier in the episode on my interview with her, and he was a guy that we talked about a lot, you know, uh, a lot of people rolling their eyes when they saw he was going to be tight end one during training camp. They're like, oh, well, no better than Jeremy Sprinkle. The guy used to be a quarterback. I was at the game last year against Detroit, and, and I saw a lot from Logan as a blocker with his athleticism. I was also – I watched him play Virginia Tech, man. The guy's an athlete, and, you know, not only did he bring a lot as a pass catch yesterday, but, I mean, just – he, he he plays to the whistle. He had that yeah. really important fumble recovery. He'll mm-hmm. block whoever's in front of him and he'll knock him out. Like I said, I was at the Lions game. He knocked Kerrigan's. He literally broke Ryan Kerrigan's helmet. Like <laughs> not not even kidding. I could hear it from the nosebleeds. It, it was nuts. But just Logan Thomas is absolute grinder. He fits the Ron Rivera ideology. I, this was his best performance to date. And if there are any doubters on him, I, I think he's proven them wrong. He had that phenomenal catch that honestly should have been pass interference. There are multiple times where he had to take a hit and he took it in stride and it went for six. So. Joey, who gets your game ball? Well, Mont- just a shout out to you, Montez Sweat. That is my kid's favorite uh, football player. They both have Montez Sweat jerseys, my three nice. and two year olds. So they were running around with those last night. And Logan Thomas, it just keeps getting better. But my game ball has to go to someone that I've really had, you know, it's it been a camp hero, someone who the coach gave a game ball to. But it has to be Cam Sims. Yep. With the uh, way he played yesterday, you know, he's someone that uh, did, didn't make the roster, you know, at the end of the year. A special teamer came in, you know, Played great. I remember early in the year making, you know, downing punts, doing stuff like that. And as we started getting injuries on, you know, to the to wide receiver position, he started to get his uh, opportunities. And he's made the best of them. And yesterday I talked to Ryan earlier about two key plays in this game, two huge plays in this game. Well, actually three. But two of the ones that really changed the momentum was right before halftime, that catch, where he, he muscles around, gets out a great block from, from, Terry, from the captain, Terry McLaurin, around the corner, and goes gets in the field goal range. And then after halftime, when we're doing that drive, we're in a third and I think I was like third and 17, third and 15, something like that. And he gets that wide receiver screen and just works it. Puts one hand on the ground to get balance and just works it down the field. Gets that first down. We end up scoring a touchdown on that drive. And, you know, obviously the, the one-handed catch he makes at the end of the game that everyone's going to remember, you know, that at, um, to get us in the field goal range to take the lead. But just Cam Sims, you know, with Terry McLaurin not being, you know, the captain yesterday, only getting two catches with our, with our running backs going down. Somebody had to step up, and I'm glad it was someone like that. I mean, Cam Sims, he's a phenom, 6'5", got that big body. You know, he's going to be hard to tackle. We got ourselves a tandem of receivers, guys. 
Absolutely, man. You know, he made that play against the New York Giants as well right at the end. I, I love that you brought up that, that jailbreak screenplay. He really planted his hand in the ground, did not give up on the play. He had no business getting that much yak. No business. Mm-hmm. And he's become an absolute grinder. That was a guy that was a – some would say a camp body. You know, some would say, you know, I don't know how he's made it this far. You know, should have been cut a long time ago. And he's really come to his own, you know, with the with the uh, absence of Kelvin Harmon. Tony Gainey Golden is hopefully coming back this week. He's really made the best of his opportunity. And I, I do think that there are big things coming from him if he stays on the field. And I think this coaching staff loves him. So, I think he's a, it's working out for everybody. I mean, everything's easy when you're winning, man. You know, it's, oh, yeah. it's on to San Francisco, <laughs> man. It's on to San Francisco. Or as I like to call it, the Trent – Williams revenge game, yeah. But oh. as far as the today, Arizona Cardinals podcast. Stadium revenge game, <laughs> who'd you say? <laughs> the Arizona Cardinals Stadium revenge game. There it is. Because we got embarrassed there last week or <laughs> earlier this year. Earlier this year, yeah. He had to one up me. <laughs> 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 That's all the time we got today. Today, go guys. Ryan, Joey, thank you guys so much for coming on. You know, can't wait to follow you guys and the allies behind enemy lines moving forward. Can't wait to have you guys back on. Yeah, man. Thank you. We appreciate it again. Thanks for coming on uh, or thanks for having us on, excuse me. And also thanks for coming on our show, you know, sometime down the road. How about that? Uh, we'd love to have you on as well. You know, do a little crossover. Always, like I said, always fun. We all, everybody needs some allies. We definitely, uh, you know, always love connecting to with people that, uh, that share the same love for this great team that we do. So yeah, it was a, it was a blast. Always fun. Uh, but yeah, thanks for having us, man. Tell yeah, the people where they before, can find these two diehards from Texas at. <laughs> uh, before I do that, bro. Go ahead, no, go ahead, Ryan. I'll say something after you're done. Go ahead, go ahead. Go for it, go for it, go for it. Well, I was going to say, is I just want to say, I, I listened to, I think it was your last, was your Friday show. You're talking about the Steelers preview and your uh, manscape, you know, you talk about the sacks so much. It's just so amazing. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> you made me want to go buy my grandpa <laughs> a nice little manscape kit for his sack. You know, so was- <laughs> your balls will thank you joey promo code brawl we already know the brawl i was gonna throw it in the beginning i don't want to i don't want to barrage you with it but if you want to bring it up i don't i don't mind a shameless plug i don't mind a shameless plug <laughs> but yes but, but yes no no problem man i really love the promo but yeah you can find us you know um allies capital b-e-l on twitter you can find us on youtube you can find us on facebook you can find us on Apple Podcasts, Allies Behind Enemy Lines. Come, you know, follow us. Check us out. We really appreciate all the Washington football love out there. Check out Allies Behind Enemy Lines with Joey and Ryan Silva. Now available anywhere podcasts can be found. Thank you so much again, fellas. But as far as this episode and other episodes of Washington Brawl, you can find us anywhere podcasts can be found. Subscribe, leave a rating, review. Catch us on YouTube, where you can also find our Washington Brawl Madden 21 Game of the Week Twitch series. Got the PS5. We're going to get it going this weekend. Um, Joey, before I actually go, I, I I think you're the gamer, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Just Madden. Just Madden. Just play Madden. It's not what you're going to get hey, me man. past anything. I, I got something going with the Redskins, Addicts. I, I think we get you and me on some one-on-one matchups. See, see if we can get cooking. Oh, yeah, I got a theme team that will rock your socks, man. So we'll okay. see. <laughs> All right, you're ready. First, folks, add them to the queue. Um, hit yes. up www.brawlnetwork.com. Pick up some Washington Brawl merchandise, support your boys, and read our latest articles. Got another action-packed episode headed up this Friday, guys, featuring some more special guests. But as far as today is concerned, enjoy the victory, Washington football fans. This has been the Washington Brawl Podcast, presented to you by the Brawl Network. Peace.